Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hey everybody, it is Kathy Guggenauer with the Dare to Leap podcast. I have the great honor today of having Adita Clifton here with me. Dita is the CEO of the company called The Office Squad. We're going to learn all about what that is today. She's also a wife, mom, Air Force veteran, and dog wrangler. And her mission is changing the way America grows small businesses. Dita, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hey, good to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So would you tell us just a little bit about yourself, like where you live and anything else I left out of that intro? Okay. Um, well, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, it's really quiet around here right now. <laughs> Yeah, because the casinos haven't the, opened. The back casinos yet. are are sh shut down and boarded up for the first time I think in history, um, but they are supposed to be opening up uh, in the first week of June. So yay! But uh, I guess I live here in Las Vegas. We are military transplants. There is a Air Force base here called Nellis Air Force Base, and um, so that's how we got here. I have um, a home out in the suburbs, and uh, my office is a good like five minutes away. So. That's where I am. And it's Wonderful. like 107 today. And believe it or not, it is that temperature here also if uh, you in the humidity. I was so, going to say, it's a dry heat. <laughs> you have really dry and 107 really dry. I've been in that kind of weather too, and that's really hot. Um, so if you see me sweating, it's because it's 99% humidity here today. That's no fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dita, I'd like to just jump right in and have you tell us about your amazing business that you are the CEO of today. Tell us all about it, all the goodness of it, and any plans that you have for the future. Cool. Well, I love to talk about myself and my business, so thank you. <laughs> we all love to talk about ourselves, uh, even you shy ones. Um, so, the Office Squad is... Gosh, it'll be 19 years old this August, and uh, we're franchising starting in uh, 2021, so I'm really excited about that. We are a full back office support squad, or team as some people like to say, for small business owners, entrepreneurs, startups, uh, any size, shape, small business you can think of. I, I hate the word, what's your target market, because it's everybody. Um, we have three levels of service and we're kind of based on military terms and um, military systems and procedures because that's where I spent uh, a little bit of my time and then I married a pilot and so that's just been our life, the, the military way of doing things. So that's the business model is kind of based on that. That's where the words, you know, the office squad comes from. Uh, in the Air Force, you have a base, a wing. Uh, a squad and a flight. So we've divided our businesses model up a little bit like that. I have uh, 11 on staff currently. We have four full-time bookkeepers, three full-time admin assistants, uh, a customer relations manager, a sales liaison. Um, I have a GM and an office manager. I can't count, but I think that's 11. So I have created a little business that runs by itself. Uh, I like to say I've done the impossible because I had uh, advisors and uh, accountants and CPAs telling me that it wasn't possible to scale a bookkeeping business and uh, lo and behold it is so never say it's not impossible or that it is impossible. Right. Uh, does that cover it? Yeah so I would love to ask you a few additional questions about your business. Okay. So first of all, congratulations on doing what others said was impossible. What gave you the courage to be able to do that? Um, maybe it's not so much courage as tenacity. Um, 
and I have um, I have an entrepreneurial father. So he he has a, a shop that in Texas, a, a little machine shop that's just he's always been can't work for anybody else. So I think I have that mentality. But I just saw something that needed to be solved and felt that I could solve it. And so I just started small and over the last 18 years have grown it to be what it is. That's an, that's an amazing success story. So, because in my opinion, it's not easy when multiple people tell you something isn't impossible. Something isn't possible. They did the same thing. <laughs> something isn't possible. Uh, to have the the tenacity, the courage to go ahead and do it anyway. Yeah, so it is possible. We can make yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and obviously, there was something inside of you that just knew it was possible. Uh, well, I think if you see a need, I, I kept seeing. I, I had a small bookkeeping business, and I kept seeing these business owners that were, excuse me, getting you know screwed by bookkeepers that didn't know what they were doing. So it wasn't fair to them to let that happen. So I just, um, I'm, I'm a fixer. I needed to fix it. That's awesome. And let's talk about your staff for a few minutes. So you mentioned that you have 11 people on your staff and you said you have a tiny office. So where do all your staff members work? Um, well, the office is a, probably a good, I don't know, 1,200 square feet. We have a bullpen and we have some offices. So it's, it's not, it's not tiny. I started That's with tiny. tiny. Started uh -huh. with tiny. Yes. Um, so they, uh, we have a bullpen where everybody, the bookkeepers sit in the bullpen and admin actually works the front desk. So we're in a privately owned executive suite right now. And we, we work the front desk and we help manage that. So that was kind of a deal I made during the Great Recession to survive. That's awesome. Again, thinking out of the box, totally thinking out of the box, just like you did building your company itself. Yeah. Yeah. They, we, people think we work remotely. We work remotely with our clients. Our clients we hardly ever see, but we all come into an office. Um, we did have three that worked from home during the, the pandemic, so we can do it. It's very easy. All the, all the technology is there, but, um, but they come into the office. So since you work remotely with all of your clients, so your clients don't actually come into your office, nor do you go to their office. Nope. Do you have clients all over the U.S.? We do. Not as many as you would think. Uh, a lot of, you know, I'm nationwide. I keep telling everybody, but you know, I haven't <laughs> quite reached that far yet. Um, we have most of our bases here in Vegas and the surrounding area. Uh, Henderson is the other side of town, which is a good two, you know, an hour drive. Um, but it's, you don't have to be right there with the person, but a lot of people want to know where their bookkeeper is. So that's why the franchise model will be built the way that it is it's not all remote okay so let's go straight into the franchise model because that was going to be my next question next anyway question. what made you think of doing a franchise what need did you see or what issue came up um and talk a little bit about what that franchise is going to be like and if people want to get in touch with you about it how they might do that absolutely um i want to expand and um expanding takes money bandwidth capital and so i can either partner with an investor and share my wonderful ideas with others or i can be selfish and and create it and do it myself so the franchise model is a do it myself be selfish kind of thing um like i said i've been doing this for 18 years run to a lot of people there's a lot of good and there's a lot of not so good so you'd be careful with who, who you know, like, and trust. But the, the franchise model is for bookkeepers and accountants and virtual assistants, literally, so that they can do what I did, only faster, better, and way smarter. Because I've made all the mistakes. I've, I've missed the tax payments. I've, I've survived the recession. Um, I've hired the wrong people and kept them too long. And so now we take everything that we've learned 
and we convey that to someone else and say, look, here, here's the way to grow your business faster, better, and smarter and help grow small business while you're growing your small business. Does that make sense? This is crazy going round and round. <laughs> no, no, it, sound, it made a lot of sense. That sounded okay. really good. Yeah. And is the franchise what ready for people to step into or are you still waiting on putting some more? Um, uh, there's some legal that goes with it. So I hired a legal team. We're working on the FPD uh, and that'll go back and forth. And there's this big fat manual that needs to be put together. So I've got that tweaking that. Uh, so it's just paperwork really. Um, there is a spot on the website. You can go look and send me an email about what territory you would like. We're going to do it by zip code. Um, oh, cool. So if you think you might want to do something like that next year, give me a holler. Yeah. So it sounds like um, you, people need to like take a look at it if they're interested, uh, start thinking about it, start working with you and perhaps get on your waiting list for when it is time. Get the territory before it's taken. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. And I love that you are limiting it like that because that makes it so much more special for that franchisee. Yeah, it's a you can have clients from just about anywhere. So you need to be, you know, on it to know what you can and cannot do. See. And could you share and we will do this um, in the notes for the podcast, but in case somebody's just listening and can't access the notes right now can you tell people again how to access your website oh it's easy it's just the office squad.com www.theofficesquad.com so um pick a domain the yeah, office squad.com was taken when i first started but yeah. uh it miraculously appeared so that's but, so did you just keep looking for it uh, GoDaddy has this really cool thing where you can put a, I would like to have that message and I'll be darn it. Two months later, it didn't open up. That's fabulous. Yeah. See, already getting good tips. Got to make, good. just, just plant the seed and it will grow. That's, that's right. <laughs> uh, so let's take a pause and go back to the very beginning of your, um, Let's, let's even go back to before you became an entrepreneur, unless there was never a time you weren't an entrepreneur. Did you go to college? Did you have a, a job at a corporation or anything like that? Oh, no. Um, I joined the Air Force right out of high school because I was not a perfect child. And my parents <laughs> said, you need to go find something to do <laughs> before you get in trouble. So... Um, I went down to the recruiting mall. I don't know if you have one of those in your little town. Where there's this, you walk in the door and there's Air Force, Army, Coast Guard. You pick whatever you want. Mm. Um, I picked Air Force because the uniforms were cooler looking than Army. I did not want to wear <laughs> green. Uh, and I'll be darned if I didn't end up wearing green anyway because that's, that's what the daily uniform is, green. Um, so I joined the Air Force. Didn't go to tech school, went to boot camp, and then went straight to my first assignment, which was in Alamogordo, New Mexico, working with um, really hot fighter pilots. Ooh. Yeah, that's like, a fun. fun, you know? It's awesome. <laughs> uh, my dad was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so I got to work operations in a, an F-15 fighter squadron. I got to sit behind a big desk and answer the phone and take care of uh, pilot training and know where they are and what they were doing. So I learned all the how systems and procedures work to accomplish your mission and to help difficult personalities get to what they need to do. Um, and then I married one. <laughs> and we've been married for 34 years. Wow, you don't even look 34 years old. You must Thank have you. I have a daughter that's about that age. <laughs> um, so I started traveling around with him because you can't really keep a job when you're moving every year and a half to two years. And I started some small businesses. I made gift baskets. I did Mary Kay. I did, you know, all those things while you grow and have kids and travel. Um, and then we got here and I started my little bookkeeping business from home because I figured we were going to move again. So a virtual assistant 
specializing in bookkeeping while the kids were at school. No big plans to do anything crazy with it. And then this like light bulb came on about two years into it that said, oh my God, these people are like fighter pilots. They have these unique personalities. They have this mission. They don't want to listen to anybody else, but they need the systems and procedures. So that was kind of my aha moment. Still there? Keep going, sorry. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> so that was the aha, aha moment that I wanted to um, take what I had learned in the military and, and put it in the civilian world. And so, because bookkeepers don't really have to have a license or a class or any kind of accountability. You just say, oh, I know QuickBooks, I can do that. And you start a business. Yeah, and virtual assistants are the same way. There yeah. is no industry standard for either of those. Right, and we love to think that, you know, everybody is honest and has great integrity and does exactly what they're supposed to do. But if they have no accountability, they're working from home, you can't get a hold of them. How, how are you sure? So I wanted to change that. I wanted VAs that were accountable and under our wing, as I call it. And that's what the franchise is all about. And, um, you know, one of the things that I'm on a mission to help people learn about is exactly what you just mentioned um, the difference between VAs they're not all the same no. Be yeah and there's a wide range from fabulous ones like you um, all the way down to people that really don't know what they don't know and so they don't do the kind of professional work that you do takes all kinds but if we so, can train them right <laughs> that's right so do you have any tips um well let me let me back up a minute so i'm going to get to the tips in a minute when you were in the air force at what point did you get out of the air force um i was in about six years thank you for your service i really appreciate it thank you yeah. And what made you decide to move um, out of the Air Force? Uh, well, I was dating an officer and you can't stay in. <laughs> oh, you can tell I've never been in. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Um, yeah, it was just, it, it, we wanted to get married and, and it, I was literally working under the rank of him. And so we needed to, mm -hmm. I needed yeah. to get out. Well, he was a lucky man that you were willing to, to do that. <laughs> uh, and I'm really glad to hear that you guys are still together because that was a big sacrifice you made. Oh, that, thank you very much. I kind of feel like I, you know, I, I got, I got the bonus, you know. Oh, isn't that awesome that both of you guys feel that way? I love that. That's a really good love story. Yeah, let's so, not go there. <laughs> So when you got out of the Air Force and you were trying all these different things, which by the way, I hear this story many times and it is also my story, not getting out of the Air Force, but once I decided that I wanted something of my own, I tried Mary Kay, and I didn't try Mary Kay, I tried a MLM, Network Marketing. Uh, I tried selling on eBay, so I you know, kind of went down the same road you did of trying a bunch of different things. Yeah. So when you, decided hey you know what i think i want to have something of my own and you started trying all those different things what was it that made you think i want something of my own i want to do this on my own i'm going to take the i'm going to dare to leap into this entrepreneurial world mm. <laughs> well stupidity is the first word that comes from <laughs> i call it courage courage yeah you're, you're going for the good words um I, I think you're born with it. I, I think it's a personality. Like I said, my father had that entrepreneur thing. My, my mom has it. She's a, a painter, a creative, but she always wanted to do more. Um, you, yeah, I think it's just something that you have. It's a, it's a passion. You, you, you find something that you, 
that you believe in it and you and you want to fix it you want to do it Does that make yeah so i don't yeah. think it's something you can say i want to be a business owner i'm going to learn how to do that i think it's something that you you're born with what well i would tell you i was not born with it ah well see so yeah <laughs> I, have I no never ever being thought. wrong and coachable. That's what makes me successful. <laughs> no, I think a lot of people are born with it, especially when you have an entrepreneurial parent like you have. Do you feel like that influenced you at all? Yeah, watching him try to work with others, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, um, for me, it was just being so sick of having people tell me what I could and could not do and how I could and could not act. And I found that the only way to stop doing that was to start my own business. And like you, I didn't know what I didn't know at the time. So I'm like, heck yeah, I can do this. <laughs> I think that part that you mentioned about not, not, I don't take instruction well. I don't, I don't. So, so you kind of were born with it. Uh, uh, I see what you're saying. You want to be told what to do. You did, you yes. eventually got tired of that, and so yes. you're so you kind of were. You just didn't know you were. Yeah, um, that's a good point. So I, you just I yeah I that's why I only lasted six years in the military. You know I don't take instruction mm, yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like I take instruction well. Okay, I feel I I, I feel like I take instruction well, but. I, but not from stupid people or people who want go. to change my am. <laughs> yeah, you have a <laughs> mission to, to fix it. Yeah, you're, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's really interesting because you and I really do have a lot in common with that and I had not made that connection. So I love that we made that connection. Yeah. So you're, so you're going along and you're trying Mary King and all this other stuff. How did you find out about being a bookkeeping virtual assistant? Um, was Google around in 2000? <laughs> Probably, I don't know. We could Google it. <laughs> I Googled it. Um, like I said, we got, we got stationed, he got stationed here, got the kids in school, and it's like, okay, now what do I do? Don't wanna do Mary Kay, don't wanna do gift baskets, so what do I gotta do now? Um, I wanted something I could do from home that would grow and I think I just came across the words virtual assistant when I was searching. Um, I found the International Virtual Assistance Association, I believe. Is that still I mean, around? It, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, that's how I started, which is kind of weird to go all the way back. I actually outgrew the IV that I went to renew and they wouldn't let me renew because they said I wasn't a virtual assistant anymore. <laughs> okay, so talk about that journey. Because, okay. yeah, because I find, Dita, that this happens more frequently than not um, in women like us who, you know, we just can see the possibilities and we want to help people. And as we see those and we continue to grow, we do grow into something different and more and bigger right and that's what you've done so talk about that journey from being a va to growing into and how did it feel when i was said you're not a virtual assistant <laughs> i argued with her <laughs> <laughs> and i lost that's okay um virtual assistant by definition is one person working remotely on Yes, right and I wasn't one person anymore so um, I think that was now that you mention it kind of a turning point okay but I'm not that anymore I have to be this um, and that's you know turn me off and turn me in the other direction that okay I started calling us a virtual staff there you so go a virtual office with staff so um, we're still that we're just we're just a little bigger um but it was yeah you're right it was an awakening moment yeah and um how long ago was that that you made that turning point oh i don't remember at least <laughs> at least 12 years 10 12 years yeah okay. Okay. yeah yeah and do you feel that um or how do you feel 
that working as a virtual assistant bookkeeper helped you grow into what you are today? Oh, that was the foundation. I mean, I'd have never, I didn't, I'd never be here without, without that. Um, that was the word virtual assistant. It wasn't real big then it existed, but it wasn't real big. Um, there was no QuickBooks online. Um, I was driving around from client to client and making a backup and going home. And, um, so yeah, without the virtual assistant thing and it's, and I still, we still do it. We're doing it. You know, we're virtual yeah. assistants. We're just on a bigger platform and they're everywhere now. Uh, um, it is, it's the perfect job. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because I think a lot of people, um, and by the way, Iva's definition of virtual assistant is their definition. There is no official definition, just like we yeah. talked about, no industry standard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love Iva. I think they're awesome. I love everything that they do. So that's why I asked you how you felt when they said you couldn't be part of their group any longer. And I love that they do have those standards and things like that. But I want everybody to know, just like with you, it really is dependent on you and what you want to do. Yeah, change is good. And if you want to grow, it, it's possible. Um, I've met a lot of men and women that don't want to be any bigger than it's just them and they take right. care of whatever workload they can and that's fine. Right, um, we need them too. We, we need them and when you're tired of doing it, let me know, I'll buy you out and, <laughs> and we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah, so talk a little bit about um, like buying somebody out or being bought out. I mean, that's part of being an entrepreneur, right? You could very well sell your business. You could franchise like you're doing. There are so many different opportunities. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, you need to start with an end in mind. And I think a lot of us forget that. We just start. And if you're, if you're, if you're doing something and there's no backup, if it's just you, then you really don't have a company. You have a job. You're absolutely right. You have a job because you can't. You've created it. a job for yourself. You've created a job for yourself. So unless you have started to create another person that can help you with that, and you can step away and you create a company, which is where the systems and procedures that we do come in, um, our franchisees will be able to step away, and then we, we'll help them with whatever they their clients need help with. It'll all be you know interconnected. Um, but yeah, I tell people all the time, if you're, if you're working and you can't take a day off, then you're, you're, you've got a job for yourself. That's really all it is. So you have to start and then you need an end game. Do you want to do that? Do you want a job that you just don't have anybody to be the boss of me, which by the way is untrue because your clients are the boss of you. There will always be a boss of you. Now you can pick your clients. That's, That's the power. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> the power. Um, but you're always working for someone and you need to know, are you going to continue to do this or do I want to do it 10 years and build up my clientele and then sell it to another virtual assistant? How do I, how do I want to get out of this? Cause I don't want to be buried with it. Do I? Yeah. And that's one of the things that I'm looking at now is my, you know, my end game, which has changed many times over the years. I'm sure yours probably has too, as you continue to grow and learn and all of those things. And it's okay to change what your end game is. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah, yeah, you, we all grow and change. Yeah. So right now I'm examining two options. If I want to hire a CEO um, when I go to into my retirement years, which isn't gonna be for a long time yet. <laughs> But you know, you gotta start thinking about that because I feel like you have to plan at least five years out. What do you think? How far out do you feel like you gotta plan? Um, I plan five years out anyway. Okay. So um, yeah, we we sit down, we do a five year plan, and we bear that we narrow that down into one year plans and months and weeks and days. So everything is planned. Um, but yeah, I'm now fifty eight, so. I want to work about another 10 years 
but I hate you. I, I I'm sorry. I do hate you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How do you look 34 and you're 58? Oh, well, thanks. Good lighting. Because I'm 63 and I look every second of it. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, my gosh. No, oh, my God. <laughs> I have my youngest daughter who is just started to work with me this year. She's actually outside the door there and she is 28. And people are always tell her she looks like she's 12 or 15. I'm like, good. So oh, when you're 58, you won't yeah. look 58. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I want to I want to actively do it for another five years and then the next five I'm just gonna sit back and be the face. Yeah. That's pretty much that's kind of what I'm looking at too. I'm either gonna be the CEO or I'm gonna hire a CEO and I'm gonna stay part of it as the head of the company, or um I'm going to sell it and I'm not I don't know yet which one I want to do because go. I'm going to make sure I do that thinking about it and then start planning for it five years before I want it to happen. So I'm not quite at that point yet. Um, but how exciting that we've been able to do this, right? Yes. It's just true. some kind of weird notice on my computer. Oh, good. It's stuff. <laughs> um, oh. I'm sorry. What? There you go. You're back. You were a little frozen in time. Yeah, something weird. Okay, let's um, pause here for a second because we'll have to take that little glitch out. So thinking back on when you started, uh oh, all right, hold on just a sec. <laughs> okay. There is something that is not liking what I'm doing there. So I'm gonna go back to setting this down. Okay. Uh, thinking back to when you started your VA business, did you have any idea that you would grow into this big company that you have created and franchise no. it? No. no, I was planning on doing it for a couple of years until he got orders and took us somewhere else. And then I would be able to virtually take my clients with me. Um, and he decided to retire. And I went, oh, hmm, I think I can grow this thing. So that's pretty cool. But no, yeah, I had no idea. I had an article written recently called The Accidental Business. So some of, that's what they oh called it. God. I love that so much. I just um, wrote an article uh, that actually went on LinkedIn and Facebook that I called that and in, in, in it, I called some people that just went through the pandemic. I called them accidental remote workers. Yeah. <laughs> They didn't want to be remote workers necessarily, but they were suddenly thrown into it. So I, you can tell I love that term too. Dita, you and I have a lot in common here. We do. I know, because guess what? When I decided to grow my business was when my I knew my husband needed to retire also. Well, he kept it. He has a civilian job that he's, um, you know, we had to be kept in the manner that we had become accustomed. So <laughs> and I, I've had that safety net, which a lot of us don't have. So. Yeah, thank you so much, him. He's my chief uh, stockholder. He says, um, mm. but he, um, I actually got to pay myself the last couple of years with some real amounts of dollars, and um, he's going to really officially retire this year. Oh, that's exciting! That's yes. very. It is. So I'd also like to ask you how it feels to be able to have a business that is so successful that you're able to have your daughter work with you. Um, well, my rule has always, well, not always, my, after I hired my oldest daughter as my first receptionist, I swore I would never hire family again. <laughs> and I tell my clients that that is a really bad thing to do. Don't right. hire family. Um, this just happened um, in March, and she has been in retail her entire adult life. She can oh, wow. sell. She can sell. She went to school for it. She can do it. And I never thought of her working for me, and she never thought about working for me because she didn't want to do bookkeeping. She didn't wasn't doing that. And we were having lunch shortly before the pandemic hit, and she said, "Mom, I think I just need a career change." And retail's going away and I, I, need, I need a career change. And I've been looking for a salesperson for years. 
So the little voice said, this is it. This is your salesperson. This is your moment. But the other little voice says, hell no, it's your kid. <laughs> What's this staff going to think? What, you know, how are you going to treat that differently and make sure that you don't have that, you know, it's your daughter in the office feel. Um, so I did. I asked the staff. We, um, we practiced a little bit with some networking events to make sure. And it's working. But I, I really had to go to the staff and say, look, I, I need a salesperson. I think she's good. What do you guys think? And they went, yes, yes. And I said, but she's my daughter. They said, that's okay. So if you're going to do it, make sure the rest of the people know what the plan is. Really vet it. Really vet it. And yeah, I, I accidentally wanted to call her sweet pea the other day and I went, oh, no, Ms. Clifton. <laughs> so um, one of the things that uh, means a lot to me, uh, and I want to get your take on it, actually two things. One is being able to um, choose your own destiny. That's one of the big reasons why I, after I began my VA business, I realized, wow, I get to choose my own destiny now. I can decide how much I earn. I can decide how big my business gets or how small it stays. I can decide, like you said, what clients I work. So does that, how does that sit with you, that term destiny? Does that feel impactful for you? It is impactful. I hadn't, um, hadn't really thought about it. I just was kind of just living day by day, you know, married to a fighter pilot, moving every couple of years and um, just doing what needed to be done. Um, I think it probably, I don't know, hit me about 10 years ago when the recession hit here in Las Vegas. It hit really hard. Businesses were closing, going bankrupt. And I could have closed the whole thing said, never mind, my husband makes a good living, I'm just gonna go home and be a wife, um, which would have been a lot easier. <laughs> but that, that wasn't my destiny. I, I don't wanna sit home and just you know be the wife. I've always pushed to do more. And I don't know if this is leaving a legacy now that Taylor's here. Um, she, you know, we've talked about her taking my place in five years and, and keeping it going. So yeah. now, now there is the legacy. Um, but it wasn't there before. It's just, I knew what I wanted my end game to be. I wanted to create something that would go on past me. Yeah, that's a legacy right there. And the, and the other way I look at a legacy, because I don't have any children or grandchildren that want to work in my business. Um, uh, my, I have a son and grandson in the Navy, and that's what they want to do. And everybody else is doing their own thing too yeah. and nobody to be in my business. <laughs> so um, I got to thinking about, well, what kind of legacy am I leaving? And I realized that I'm leaving a legacy of being a role model for others, yeah. being a role model for my kids. Even if they don't choose to do what I did, I was still able to show them that you know, women can be powerful. Women can have their own businesses. Anybody can do what they want to do. You don't have to settle. Right. It's a big world and you can do whatever you want. Don't listen to anybody. Yeah, I did that too. <laughs> don't listen to anybody. I love that one. <laughs> don't listen to anybody. <laughs> Make your own decisions. Well, you can right do behind you that, want. <laughs> yeah, well, right behind that is get a peer group that can help you make the right decisions. Yes, yes, that's really important. And support you through the hard times. Right. Because there are hard times as a business owner. Very. So let's talk a little bit about that. What challenges have you encountered and how have you overcome them? Um, well, the recession we talked about a little bit. Um, I gave up my location and uh, had to let half the staff go. We lost a lot of our clientele. And I uh, did a partnership with the gentleman that owns this building. And he needed someone to help manage it and run the front desk. And I needed a place to be. So this is where we have been camping for the last uh, almost 10 years. So that's how we survived that. 
Um, and it, you know, it wasn't easy. I, I, don't, I don't really know how to explain it. You just keep plugging away one day at a time, kind of like now with the pandemic and everybody's laid off and, and uh, businesses are shut down and it, it too will pass. You just have to keep looking toward the end. Um, but I think one of the biggest challenges that I've had is um, there's a lot of self-doubt and is this going to work? Can I really do it? Like right now we're, um, we're looking to <clears throat> lease 8,000 square space, 8,000 square feet in a new building up the road with a huge tenant wow. and, and, and lots of things going on. And I'm going, yeah, I can do that. It's awesome. We can do it. And then the other part's going, how the hell are you going to do that? <laughs> are you crazy? Are you crazy? <laughs> What's, that's 10 more years. <laughs> So when, first of all, let me just say, Dita, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I am sure that everybody listening to this is just like I am, which is really surprised that you ever have self-doubt because you sound so confident. Thank you. It's powerful and strong. Yeah. So when you have that self-doubt, when those questions come in, what do you do? How do you overcome that? Uh, well, your peer group is huge, so mentors or um, a board of advisors, depending on how big you are. Um, it's not family doesn't really get it. My husband, like I said, is a is a career pilot. He wouldn't. He doesn't get the entrepreneur thing at all. Um, making friends is it's not a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> Burning bridges is okay. Um, there's not really anybody you can share that with unless you talk to other business owners who have been there and done that and they can give you advice on which path they took, how it worked for them. And then you can make that decision. You, you weigh all of those things and, and make that decision. I, I still have, you know, you still have it today. Like movie stars have stage fright still. You, you push past it because Otherwise, you get stuck there. That's good. So tenacity seems like a big part of what you lean on for everything. Just keep moving, put one step, one foot in front of the other, don't give up, keep going. Yeah. Is there That's another way? <laughs> mm. <laughs> totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. I think that's really important and that is one of the top traits people have to have yeah. if they're going if they're going to have their own business. So I um, a Facebook post by I think it's called One Goal or something this morning goals, um, and it said step into the fear. The only way you're going to grow is to just step into it and 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 it goes away. Face the fear and do it anyway. Yep. And um, another quote that I love, you, um, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. Yeah, we were, I was talking to my GM about this new undertaking with the move and the size and the huge rent and all of that. And she, she has turned into what I used to be, you know, and that's great to have. She's the worry wart. Um, <laughs> so I have her now so that I don't, I don't always have to do it. And she's like, well, but with but this and but that and what if this happens and what if that happens and I'm like, we'll get past it. I've made it this far. I'm not worried about it. You know, you just. Uh, I think I saw a teacher the other day said, did, did, did you die? Oh, I totally agree with that. And I have <laughs> some of my one of my first clients. I I can't even tell you the number of mistakes I made as a VA. I mean, I should have been fired so many times. Um, <laughs> But one of my clients that I made a big mistake, uh, something really big, and um, I just apologized all over myself, and I said, you know, here's how I'm going to fix it, it, and I said, I don't blame you if you fire me, and she, she said, nobody died, we're fine. Yep, you didn't die, did you? I think a lot of my um, my staff, we do a 90-day boot camp for any new people coming on board, and um that's a big subject is making mistakes and 
mistakes are allowed here. You just be truthful. Uh, and every one of our clients that's been with us the longest started out with mistakes. They know that you make them. They know you're going to fix them. They know you're going to make it better. Yes. And we're humans. We're going to make mistakes, period. Anybody that thinks they're going to be perfect, they're kidding themselves. Yeah. So I love your attitude on that. Figure out how to fix them so they don't happen again. Yeah. But mistakes. And if they're not okay with that, then they weren't a good client. That's right. It's okay to let them go. Yes. Without burning, without burning the bridges. Right. No bridges. <laughs> That's come right. back when you need me and I'm better. Come, come back, send other people my way, right? Yeah. 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 Well, in wrapping this up, this has just been awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of your insights. What is there anything else that you want to be sure that our listeners or our watchers, because we're on video too, uh, yeah. know? Um, I think we touched on it a little bit, and I hear it with a lot of women and I see it on Facebook and um, a lot of the groups that I'm in you know they're selling jewelry and they're doing VA and they have a part-time you know something over here and something over there and I run around going pick one pick one thing that you like that you are passionate about that is going to change the world even if it's jewelry, yeah, if it's going to change the world. Your tiaras, even um, if it's tiaras, right? Pick one because it drives me flipping crazy when you go to a networking event and they say, "Well, I'm this and I'm this and I'm this." Mm -hmm. Okay, which one are you? And what do I right. call you? About? Which one do I call you about? Yeah, pick one, stay in your lane, and go full force. Because what are the um, What's sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. But if negatives to do, um, okay, there you go. Get what, back. Are the, what are the negatives, uh, to being all over the place like that, to doing more than one thing, to not focus down on one thing? What, what are the ah. well, I mean, I my job is to help business owners, so I tell them that all the time. Um, the, the more things that you're doing, the less. Oh, that sounds bad grammar. The less you are good at them. <laughs> Not the right sentence, but... Um, well, good you are at it. Yeah, you're good at it. So if you focus on one thing and it makes money or it starts to make money or it's not, maybe it's not making money and you go to start another thing, neither one of them is going to make any money. And it's really not about making money to begin with. It's about helping someone and having a purpose. So if you help someone, you have a purpose, then money will follow. So find that thing. It's going to take a while. Find the one. That is such great advice. Thank you. I was, I was listening to somebody yesterday and they said, and by the way, I, I preach this message myself all the time, Gia. Um, but I liked his take on it. And he said, choose one thing, one very narrow niche. That you yep. can put it into two words and boy that was hard for me to put it into two words i really struggled with that one now i don't think you have to put it into two words but i think it needs to be you know something narrow something specific and he said earn a hundred thousand dollars at that and you have my permission to to start something else if you feel like you want to but i will bet that once you get to a hundred thousand on that thing you will love it and you yeah. will not stop that yeah um, there's a lot of, um, virtual assistants that are pick one thing, you know, they're admin or their bookkeeping or their taxes, you know, pick, pick one thing that you're really good at. Um, mine was bookkeeping. It's still, uh, 80% of what we do. And I added those other little things like admin and phones to support that business owner in other ways, but it's, the mission is always about support. Yeah, that's a great mission. So to share one more time, uh, the two different kinds of uh, people that might want to, if there's more than two, let me know, but bookkeeping for your business or oh, breaking up people 
computer and I'm so sorry. I don't that's know okay. what's going on with my internet. It's just storming here. Oh, that's right. It's the weather. You're out in the boonies. <laughs> yeah, you're better. <laughs> just hold it like that, like those little rabbit ear antennas. Okay. <laughs> so the people that uh, are good for what I do or who I want to help, franchises? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, there's three. So I want to help that startup, the VA that's just starting out and doesn't quite know how to do it. And we can help them with the franchise, start from the ground up. Um, bookkeepers, CPAs, virtual assistants that already have a firm that don't want a job. They want a system and procedure that will grow and help them get out of that job. They make great franchisees. Um, and then if someone has an executive suite building like this wonderful guy who wants to put an office squad in it. So if you've got business owners in your building and you put an office squad in there, then there's a bookkeeper, an admin, and a phone person, and they've got everything they need all in one place. That's it. The office squad. Built. Boom. Built in office squad. You can't ask for more than that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like a Smith's grocery store with a Starbucks in it. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody wanting to find out more about Dita and all of her opportunities, please go to her website, theofficesquad.com, and I will have that link in the notes for this podcast. Dita, thank you so very much. Thank I really you for the opportunity, Kathy. It was fun. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.